We've had some rain here overnight at Knock Hill and we're about ready to go out for race two of the BRCC Super Cup Mazdas. We've got Luke Herbert in P1. So Andy, we'll hand it back to you. Yes, thank you very much, Lindsay. Cars lining up on the grid ahead of this second race of the weekend. Grid for this one decided by the second fastest times from qualifying yesterday, which means that it's Herbert on pole again, but this time with Carl Garnett alongside him, ahead of James Blake Baldwin and Aidan Hills row two. Jack Harding and Steve Roberts make up the third row, ahead of Colin Bysouth and Nick Dunn down on row four. Row five is where we find Johnny Greensmith. He should be one to watch for moving forward and Simon Baldwin alongside as well. Then it's Lewis Carter and Will Stevenson ahead of Alec Livesley, Sam Tatler, Jack Sycamore and Gary Townsend. Tom Parker is next on the ninth row alongside Christian White ahead of James Kell, Alex King, Mark Swarbrick, Nick Rutter and George Grant right at the back with Darren Stapleton for company. Darren, of course, uh, didn't even make it halfway around the first lapping race one before he ended up going backwards into the barriers. The car you can see there at the back of the grid uh, has now been fixed. It's not quite in showroom condition at the rear end, but it works, and uh, he will be looking to try and move forward. So the five second board is up, the red lights go on, it's Carl Garnett on the outside of row number one looking to try and make a good start on the run down towards the hairpin. He's away from the line decently but he's on the outside line going into the braking zone and this is always fraught with danger. Blake Baldwin's up the inside of him, Aidan Hills is going to the outside and Carl Garnett gets swamped into the braking zone of the hairpin. Is this all going to work? Three abreast of the hairpin, a bit of paint is traded but I think they all get three more or less one piece. On board with Colin Bice out now as uh, he makes his way down the uh, railway straight, that's somebody, that's Steve Roberts. That is chopping aggressively across in front of us as we hit the brakes. Now a bit more contact, quite a lot of contact in fact on the braking there is three or four cars uh, concertina together. Jack Harding launches up the inside of Carl Garnett now whose race is already unravelling. He's already down to fourth and this will be down to fifth if Harding can find a way through. Side by side into the chicane, hold your breath and Harding does go through. Fantastic bit of overtaking there from Jack Harding and he's up into fourth position. Garnett down to fifth, Roberts up the inside trying to find a way through into the left hander but can't do it. Well this is already a more energetic energetic race than we saw yesterday where most of the lead contenders were fairly happy just to follow each other in line and sort of try and figure their way around this reverse layout direction not hill in race two they though they are absolutely on it james blake baldwin having already to defend his second base maiden hills who will not back out of around the outside maneuver we saw this at silverstone last time out but blake baldwin hangs on to it down in towards the hairpin uh, hill slots back into third jack harding is there in fourth jack did lose the championship lead in race one uh, to James Blake Baldwin and uh, James is ahead of him in race two as well there are only three points in it but remember Harding came here with a one point advantage down into the uh, breaking zone at Clark's to go again this is all playing beautifully into the hands of uh, Luke Herbert who's already pulling away at the front of the field Aidan Hills looks faster than uh, Blake Baldwin here at this stage of the race though he takes a tighter line into the chicane the cars really move around on the suspension as they launch their way downhill having a little look on the inside there uh, into the left hander at Scotsman but there's no way through uh, for for Aidan Hills on board with Vice South looking back at Johnny Greensmith. Johnny Greensmith started down in ninth position in this one. Having started eight yesterday, he finished fourth. What sort of progress can he make in race number two? He needs to try and make progress because he slipped now to 10 points behind the championship leader after race one. Level third with the race leader Luke Herbert, who's continuing to fight his way back in the championship picture. Aidan Hills around the outside of Blake Baldwin again at the hairpin, but that leads him vulnerable to attack from Jack Harding now, who got up the inside and will try to take advantage of this to move his way through. Wheel to wheel down the straight towards Clarks, Harding on the inside, but Hills on the outside had the momentum and holds on to the position. On board again with Bysouth, looking back at Johnny Greensmith to our left, I think that's Carl Garnett. And Colin Bysouth on the inside line, clobbers the curb, drifts a bit wide, oh, there's a bit of contact there, isn't there? And as they make the way out of the corner, oh, more contact, and Garnett is off, Carl Garnett is off, and bang into the tie wall. Oh dear, well, Carl Garnett, a golden opportunity for some good points starting on the front row of the grid, and unfortunately, that has not worked out well. Here's a replay from outside, bit of contact there with Bysouth, gets him sideways, Greensmith makes it three wide. Well, that was a real master sandwich, and there just not was not room for all three of them to get out of the corner together, and unfortunately, it is Carl Garnett who ends his race in the barriers. So back with by South now as he makes his way over the hill. He survived that moment somehow, despite being uh, piggy in the middle there between Garnet on his outside and Johnny Greensmith on the inside. Greensmith really gaining from that. Oh, by South's off! Colin Bysouth off again into the gravel trap down at the hairpin, and the car just never stopped. What on earth happened there? They might have caught a damp patch of the road. We have had, as Lindsay mentioned pre-race, quite a bit of overnight rain. The majority of the track is dry, but it could be a bit damp offline, and maybe if you caught a damp patch on the brake, you'll hit the curb, maybe, which would be very slippery, of course. That could have just sent him straight off into the barriers, but that was, that was a strange one. Well, 
already a very dramatic second encounter here for the Master MX-5 Super Cup. Hands out of cockpits, which tells me that we might be about to go safety car, which is not the news that Luke Herbert wanted to hear. Yes, we do go safety car. That is why. It's because of Colin Bysouth's car uh, down in the gravel trap at Turn 1. But Luke Herbert had this. Well, that must have been nearly a two-second lead that he built up over Blake Baldwin in second place, and that will now be absolutely eradicated instantly by the emergence of the safety car. Colin Bysouth's car should be able to get out of the gravel fairly easily. Here's a replay externally of the... Well, Hills and Blake Baldwin was actually side by side there, a bit further up the road. And Jack Harding was trying to get up the inside and then screech of tyres, clatter of gravel. Thankfully, not the smack of a car hitting the tyre wall. He managed to avoid getting any damage done there, did Colin Bysouth, but that will be the end of his race. So, all sorts of drama in the first third of this fifth round of the 2018 Mazda MX-5 Super Cup. Colin Bysouth is out of the gravel trap, but the man who was solidly inside the top 10 in the points coming into this weekend, unfortunately, his weekend not really going quite to plan. He was eighth in race one, um, having started eighth. He was running about there in race two, but as you can see, the car with a fair few war wounds from that contact earlier on, scattering gravel all over the road. He will probably have to pull off the road uh, into retirement because, of course, he's received um, outside assistance, but at least if we can get the car back into the pit lane, the team could get it back into the paddock, start work on repairing it, because it's a relatively short turnaround time before race three later on. We had one race on the Saturday, that was yesterday, and two races today on the main race weekend here at Knock Hill, and the Mazda Road 5 Super Cup once more putting on a starring performance. The lights, I think, were off on the safety car there. We'll Double check that, check that as it comes back into view. We may get away with just a single lap behind the safety car here. Or is it too late to call uh, for them to go green this time? We'll have to wait and see. The field's cycling through now. The lights are staying on, so we'll have one more lap. Uh, because although the marshals did get Colin Bysouth's car out of the gravel fairly rapidly, um, they, they didn't quite have the track cleared in time for us to go racing this time. So Luke Herbert um, still, well, he's level third in the championship now. So, uh, in fact, they're going to move Carl Garnett's car as well whilst we've got the safety car out. So we're going to take the time to uh, move both of the cars that were deposited at the, uh, at the side of the road out of the way. Uh, but yes. But yes, Luke Herbert is our uh, reigning champion, third in the points going into this one, now only 10 points away from the championship lead. Another race victory, especially with Johnny Greensmith um, and Jack Harding a bit further down the order than they might like to be. This will move Herbert right back into contention. There's Colin Bysouth. He is indeed heading in towards the paddock, so he retires from the race, but at least the car is, well, not quite in one piece, but that's uh, definitely fixable, that um, damaged wing on the, the left-hand side of the car. So hopefully he should be back out in race number three. Of course, they start race three, though, the way in which they finish this race um, with a um, partial grid reversal. So, um, but if you start right at the back, or if you finish right at the back, or you don't finish this race, then you will be starting right at the back for uh, race number two. So it's, uh, sorry, for race number three, I think you pardon, later on this afternoon. So it is important that you get to the end of this race and you try and finish inside the top 10 because it's uh, the back end of the top 10 that will be reversed. It's a random number that's pulled out of the hat, but uh, you have to be inside the top 10 to be eligible for the grid draw. So, cars bunching back up again because the lights are out on the safety car. Now, Luke Herbert went quite early when we had the safety car yesterday. He sort of accelerated somewhere around this part of the circuit. He's keeping things tight, keeping things tight. There's Carl Garnett's car into the pit lane, meanwhile, as the restart is about to happen. That doesn't look particularly pretty, but that, again, should be fixable for race three. And now Luke Herbert has stepped on it, but this time around, Blake Baldwin has gone with him. And again, it's Aidan Hills in third. He doesn't quite get the jump on the restart, so the top two breaking away immediately as the green flags fly once more here at Knock Hill. Still over half the race to go, and on the attack is James Blake Baldwin looking for his second win of the season. Making their way down towards the hairpin once again. Is there an opportunity, maybe, uh, for the lead to change hands on this occasion? think James was quite close enough to attack. He might be on the exit of the corner, but to look at the way the slipstream is starting to take effect, we wouldn't think of uh, slipstream as having a particularly profound effect here at Lock Hill. But we do have these two quite long straights, which do help keep the cars fairly well bunched together. Cars really 
rocketing out of Clark's there and off onto the gravel goes Aiden Hills. Oh, and Johnny Greensmith behind, so two cars off. And Aiden Hills is still in the gravel as they arrive down at the chicane. He'll lose two places minimum, and that is not what Aiden Hills needed to do. So through has gone Nick Dunn remarkably as well past him. Nick Dunn doing a really good job. Um, and further back, we saw Greensmith slip back behind Steve Roberts and Simon Baldwin. So two cars as one there in completely separate incidents running wide and once you get a wheel on the dirt there coming out of Clark's it just sucks you straight out onto the gravel and it's very hard to get back on the road as Aidan Hills in particular found out so that really has allowed the top three to break away now Herbert Blake Baldwin and Jack Harding and Aidan Hills with work to be done to get his way back up towards the top five back down through the hairpin he goes he's already right onto the tail of Nick Dunn though so what for a move to come fairly swiftly here for Aidan Hills as he tries to uh, work his way back into contention in fact he pulls up alongside Nick Dunn here does he towards the inside lining towards Clarks you can overtake here as James Blake Baldwin proved in race one and Aidan Hills is about to prove in slightly ro less robust fashion here in race two. Oh, and in fact that eases Nick Dunn this time out into the gravel trap and he will now be the one that loses two three places because uh, three will also go Johnny Grease in fact four places lost because Sam Tatler goes through that's a shame for Nick Dunn he was on for his best finish so far in the championship with fourth place if he could have held on to that but unfortunately he is the latest driver to find the Clark's gravel trap and loses four places as a result that frees up Aiden Hills though who already has started to pull away there from Johnny Greensmith Simon Baldwin sorry from Steve Roberts Simon Baldwin and Johnny Greensmith in that order the leaders make their way down towards the hairpin it's Jack Harding going on the attack here he wants this championship lead back away from James Blake Baldwin he looks to the outside line on the way into the hairpin can't do it there. What about the exit speed? Gets more momentum out of the turn. Is he up alongside the former champion? Let's wait and see. Yes, I think he is. So wheel to wheel for second place here. Jack Harding on the inside, Blake Baldwin on the outside line as they turn, well, first of all, through the right hander, but then into the left hander at Clark. Harding has the inside line and he will go through into second place as long as he stops the car on the exit, which he sort of does. He runs a bit wide though. Blake Baldwin gets back up the inside and towards the chicane. You can't really run side by side through here. Someone had to back out of it and it's Blake Baldwin who decides that discretion was the better part of Valor and lets Harding have the place for the time being. So Jack Harding works his way through into second place. That's not quite enough yet to give him the championship lead back. He would have to either find a way past Luke Herbert to win the race or set the fastest lap in order to score enough points to retake the championship lead. But we are going safety car again. Why? What has happened? There must be another car off in a dangerous position that we haven't seen. And the safety car for the second time this race is being scrambled. I believe we might have lost Christian White somewhere along the way, we're hearing, but uh, we haven't yet seen a sign of that car off to the side of the road. Ah, there it is, though. Uh, no, it's Tom Parker making part of who's off. Not, not Christian White, it's Tom Parker off in the gravel trap. That is down at Clark's. Tom Parker, who was a non-finisher in yesterday's race as well. He was the car that we saw pulled off down at the chicane midway through the race. And once more, Luke Herbert, who'd been able to pull out a bit of a gap over the jostling pair behind, that gap now disappears. One driver this definitely benefits, though, is Aidan Hills, because, of course, we were mentioning that he was trying to bridge the gap back to the top three after that mistake he made off the previous restart. Well, now he's got a brilliant chance to try and regain some time. So Herbert leads the way, Harding second, Blake Baldwin third, Aidan Hills fourth. Uh, and there is Christian White, so we heard he'd been off. Looks like he's been off as well, doesn't it? With clumps of dirt and mud clinging to the side of his car. And he's brought the Divine Bath and Tile Studio liveried car into the pit lane and presumably into retirement. The team are going to have a, a quick look at the car doesn't look well, actually doesn't look as though the team are there to uh, have a look at the car at this moment in time so yeah so it's uh, Herbert from Harding from Blake Baldwin from Hills from Roberts the top five <coughs> Steve Roberts had a second place finish last time out at Silverstone and he's continuing that form here at uh, Knock Hill finished in seventh place yesterday so he's looking already to improve on that and then sixth place for Simon Baldwin seventh Johnny Greensmith after his off earlier on eighth is Tatler ninth is Nick Dunn the rest of them filing through behind but we will still have time for a few laps of racing hopefully after this safety car comes in but of course this is taking time out of the race or oh, it's a time race 20 minute races as ever for the Mazda 5 Super Cup so we don't run to a certain number of laps so so if we're behind the safety car for a decent portion of time, the clock keeps ticking and uh, we start losing laps from the race, unfortunately. Not necessarily bad news for Luke Herbert. He's now staring down the barrel of a very defensive race that he's going to have to run for the remaining part of this one, with the cars behind getting ever closer. But with still about five to six minutes left in the race, we hopefully should have time for a few more laps of this. 
they still haven't quite recovered Tom Parker's car from the gravel trap down at Clark's though, so that's going to take a little bit of work to fully retrieve. Should be out of the gravel fairly shortly, but of course then the recovery uh, 4x4 has to vacate the scene as well. Gareth Stapleton there, we can see running at the back of the grid, but he is still running, having not, as I said, made it to the end of lap one in race number one. And he is um, going to be looking to try and work his way further up the order. Of course, we lost a few now, so only 21 cars still running. The field files their way through. Discussions going on on the pit wall. As people watch on with interest, get a cracking view from that pit wall as the cars flash past you at breakneck speed, often in one long line of MX-5s, as is the case usually in this championship. The AK Automotive car there of Jack Harding running in second place. AK Automotive, former champions, of course, with Alan Henderson at the wheel of one of their cars back in 2016. Tom Parker's car has rejoined uh, and may be allowed to continue, actually, at the tail end of the field, we're hearing. So we'll wait and see. Either way, he's got a lap before the race resumes because the same car is having to stay out for another lap cars weaving left and right, trying to get some temperature into the tyres. Although it rained overnight, the ambient temperature this morning is not that low. It's quite mild, uh, quite pleasant at the moment, but it's it's expected to get even hotter uh, for this afternoon's races, more like the temperatures that we saw yesterday, which were in the low 20s. So the crowd here at Knock Hill being treated to some uh, very favourable weather this weekend. And the drivers enjoying that too, I'm sure, because the last thing they would have wanted whilst trying to contend with a brand new circuit to learn would have been inclement conditions. Tom Parker in the pit lane, potentially finding out whether he's allowed to continue in the race. And it looks like the decision is that yes, he can. So he's back out onto the track and Tom Parker continues on his way. He, of course, has lost a couple of laps as a result of being beaten to the gravel trap, but at least he can get the car running, get a bit more mileage under his belt. Tom, a relative newcomer to the championship, so uh, any mileage that he can get in the car is beneficial. So the lights are now out on the safety car. We're going racing again this time, and Jack Harding is the man with the momentum at the moment, isn't he? He made that move on James Blake Baldwin not long before the restart. He now latches onto the tail of... Luke Herbert, in fact, almost pushing Luke down the hill there. They were so close. He's trying to stay right on his toes here so as not to give away any sort of advantage to Luke. He wants to be right in the slipstream, going down straight into the hairpin this time. Luke again steps on it quite early, builds the momentum up all the way up the hill and through Duffus and onto the pit straight again. Pop back into sight and it's a car length, if that, between the top two. So good job there for Jack Harding to stay with the race leader. And come over the top of the hill, Herbert will surely have to defend the inside line and he does as Harding goes to the outside. But Harding dead go to the outside because if he does that he leaves the door wide open for James Blake Baldwin to just slip up the inside of him so in the end it's a bit of a stalemate situation it's Aidan Hills again though who is a man on a mission he had a big look to the inside of James Blake Baldwin there in towards the hairpin James is just about able to hang on to that podium position and carry some good speed down the railway straight but uh, Aidan Hills taking full advantage of that safety car meaning that he's closed right back in on the podium positions and he wants to try and get himself through into a podium position if possible leader runs a bit wide but it's Harding in second who's having to go defensive here. This is allowing Herbert to pull away again as two cars both try and find their way past Jack Harding. First of all, James Blake Baldwin and then the blue, orange and black car at number eight of Aidan Hills and Blake Baldwin is sideways in front of him there as he hits the brakes into the next left-hander. Back up the hill they go again. Steve Roberts, Simon Baldwin and uh, Johnny Greensmith also want to be a part of the podium battle as they pop back over the top of the hill. Good run through that sequence of corners there though for Jack Harding. He's been able to actually pull away slightly from Blake Baldwin behind and he's actually just as close to Herbert this time as he was a, a lap ago on the restart, only this time Blake Baldwin is not as close to him, so uh, as a result, Harding could afford to go to the outside line, a few uh, little looks up the inside there from Simon Baldwin and uh, Steve Roberts, in the end, no position changes hands in the lead group, further back Nick Dunn was dicing away with Sam Tatler <laughs> as they ran side by side through the corner Hard on the brakes now, once again, using the kerb on the right-hand side of the road, which really unsettles the car, but it's just so that they get the widest possible entry into Clark's. They all run right up to the edge of the grass, uh, edge of the kerb, but unlike circuits like Silverstone, for example, where we were racing last time out, where if you run out over the outside edge of the kerb, you've just got acres of tarmac to use. Here, if you run wide, you're on the grass, you're in the gravel, and you're possibly out of the race, so you're certainly going to lose lots of time, as well as get pinged for exceeding the track limits. So uh, there are 
very, there's very, very little uh, room for error here at Knock Hill, and that's one of the reasons why the drivers really do enjoy it. The more you challenge a racing driver, the more they'll enjoy themselves, actually, and this is certainly quite the challenge. Back across the line we go then, I reckon two more laps to go, and Jack Harding, look at the car, bouncing around under braking there as he sweeps from the outside, back to the inside, then into the middle of the road again to try and cover from James Blake Baldwin behind. Still no change in the order, but these top five cars getting closer and closer together. Luke Herbert, this time around, seems to be struggling to pull away from the cars behind, despite the fact that they're busy fighting each other, you'd expect that to give Herbert the break, and although he's now built up a couple of car lengths advantage, with the effect of the slipstream and the speed that Jack Harding seems to be able to carry through the second half of the lap, it looks as though maybe Herbert's going to have to really get his elbows out over the final few laps of this race. They leap back over the hill, down towards the lowest part of the circuit, and then the long, steep climb back up through Duffus and onto the pit straight again. And again, Harding, look, you can see Gaps Blake Baldwin through that part of the circuit, and he latches right onto the tail of the race leader. So there'll be another opportunity to get the slipstream here for Jack Harding, and another chance to perhaps look to the outside line, because you'd imagine Herbert will defend the inside, but James Blake Baldwin is at the moment not a threat to Jack Harding, so Jack can sort of afford to drive wherever he wants to try and find a way past the number one car in front. There just isn't the room though, so there's a bit of a tap in the tail maybe as they go through the corner. Back down the straight they go towards Clarks again. Herbert's still hanging on. And I haven't seen any sign yet of a last lap board, so it's possible we'll get one more lap after this one as well, which is good news for us because we get to, um, we get to enjoy this ultra close quarters race even more. Harding is closer at this part of the circuit than he's ever been before. And this is the part of the track where he's pretty quick, so can he perhaps build an attack down through the chicane and in towards this next braking zone? He's certainly close, and Herbert knows it, so he just moved across to the middle of the road there, took a slightly tighter line through the left-hand kink into the braking zone just to deter Harding from having a go. These two really pulling away, though, from the group of cars behind. Lots of curb usage there for Luke Herbert as he leaps out onto the pit straight and across the start finish line once again. But no, there's cheering from the pit wall. The last lap board must have gone out and the chequered flag now goes out for the second time this weekend. It's two wins from two in Scotland for Luke Herbert. He is victorious. So Luke Herbert takes the race victory in race number two. James Blake Ball in second for Maiden Hills in third. It is um, fourth. Oh, fuck off. Luke, congratulations on winning first again. That was quite a close battle between you and Jack. Uh, there was barely a second between you. Yeah, I mean, um, I got the run on James uh, for the first few laps, pulled a gap, safety car. He's back on me, so it's like, you know, it's so demoralizing when you've pulled such a, such a gap. Um, he had another go at it, and then another safety car, and then this time it was Jack. And yeah, Jack, Jack made the best attempt to get him by, and he was with me the whole way, so maybe if he'd have got past a few laps earlier, he would have been, been with me. Brilliant. So are you quite excited for race three? Yeah, I mean, it would be nice to, to mix it up and start for back in the pack with the reverse grid. Um, but I'd like to say thank you to my sponsors, SRC Recycling, Chichester Water Sports, McEwen Milk Management, ACC Tyres and NAS Tooling, you know, for putting us here. And, and these are our first two wins of the season. So uh, hopefully we can get one this afternoon, but it's going to be tough. Great. Well, we look forward to seeing you. Thank you very much. Jack, that was a superb move on James. A little bit of payback from race one. Yeah, exactly. We got robbed a little bit of a podium yesterday. I was quite comfortably sat in third. Missed the gear coming up the hill and then James was on me and then obviously we had a bit of a touch and I went flying through the gravel. So, uh, yeah, a little bit a little bit of payback. Um, went on the inside of the same corner. He overtook me yesterday and then he got the cutback coming out and, you know, I just tur turned over to him a little bit just to basically say, well, you need to back out because I wanted that position. So, uh, yeah, he gave it in in the end and that was it. We uh, caught Luke up and fought for the win, but not quite yet. Do you think if there'd have been a couple more laps, you'd have had it? It's just so difficult um, when you've got a bit of people breathing down your neck like James stuff behind. It's hard, obviously, if Luke's defending for me to go to my normal line because obviously they can just shove it up the inside. But um, maybe, yeah, I might have been able to get a cut back. I nearly did one lap, so uh, maybe one better next race. Well, fingers crossed, and we'll look forward to seeing you on the podium after race three. Thank you very much. Cheers. Congratulations, James, in third position again. How do you feel? Uh, a little bit frustrated that we started in third and finished in third, so I suppose that's one positive. Uh, the negative was that we were in second. Uh, Jack did a, a cracking move up the inside, same as what I did to him yesterday. So um, it's a bit of touche scenario, 
but no, the car's going really, really well. Um, Blink Motorsport have done a really, really good job. You know, I, I can't thank them enough for that. Um, they really know what they're doing. So the car's on the pace. I just need to focus a bit and see if we can progress uh, for the reverse grid. Fantastic. Well, congratulations again. Thank you.